Okay, we're back and our next presenter is Melanie Lejeune. Her session title is Building a Community of Readers. But this is really um, interesting. She's gonna talk about a high school librarian's tip from a high school librarian's lens. And that was always my struggle when I was a high school librarian is getting them in to read. So I'm gonna give you controls and you can just take it away Melanie, I'm really looking forward to this one. Hey. Okay, let's get this started. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Great. Okay, let's get this from the beginning here. First, um, I wanted to say that. Um, Gosh, Christina had so much good information in her um, presentation, and I love how generous and collaborative she is. And uh, her planner, this will be my second year to use it, and it's helped me with a lot of what I'm going to share today. Um, so my goal is to show you that the small things can really make a big difference. If you'd like, you can scan the QR code, and those are uh, some resources I have. The bit.ly link is also something that you can type in. And my information is right there. Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. And I have a, my library is on Instagram and then I am professionally as well. So I'll give you a second to get that. And, um, and I, I'll also have it at the end. Okay, so uh, talking about reading, when I first uh, came into the library. I've been at the school for, uh, this is going to be my 19th year, and um, I was part-time. There was a full-time librarian who had been there a long time, and then um, I was a tech coach for a little while. I was in the classroom. It was kind of all over the place, but then there came a time when I was the librarian and also doing technology coaching, and our circulation my first year in the library full time um, was kind of dismal. <laughs> and so that became my goal. We needed to build a community of readers. And so you can see the last two years, I'm really proud of our statistics. Um, I published this year in a review at the end of the year. I adapted it from a librarian in the middle. If you don't follow her, um, you may want to because she she gives some really good resources. And um, you know, we just continue to grow and, and that's what it's all about. And sometimes, you know, it, it starts small. This is, I guess this is my fifth year full-time in the library. So, um, and I've had a lot of help along the way. We are definitely, um, it's a team effort. So what inspired me was uh, a colleague who uh, was an English teacher. She's not at our school anymore, but um, we're still friends and we still talk about uh reading and literature, um, she introduced me to Penny Kittle and Donna Lynn Miller. And these books, and Kelly Gallagher as well, changed my life. She did a lot of free choice reading in her English class, and uh, I, I was just amazed at what was happening in, in her classroom. It didn't take me long to see. And so we had a book study with the English department last summer and we read Book Love by Penny Kittle. She was a high school English teacher, a senior. She taught seniors. And what was amazing about her is she would get seniors. Her, her philosophy was it's never too late. She would get seniors who had not read much or who had fake read. And um, by the time they finished her class senior year, um, I think I remember it seems like there was a story where one student had read 20 books, um, which is huge for a high school student. So um, I just, Donna Lynn Miller has a new book, The Joy of Reading, um, and I mean, she is a co-author, and I participated in her book study this summer, and she has a, a lot of uh, things that I want to implement from that book as well. So I highly, highly recommend those books. One of the things that Penny Kittle said is teenagers want to read if we let them, you know, it's funny, like I had never realized it before until I was reading her book, but she says, you know, we tell them how important it is to read, 
but we don't give them time during the school day. I mean, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. So our English department has been amazing. And that's my first tip, provide time to read and reading choice. Our English department, um, they have a really great mindset and they uh, make a point to read 10 minutes a day to have free, to include free choice reading into their class. Um, daily class schedule. We meet four times a week. So, you know, some weeks there may be some, some days that it doesn't quite work out that way, but for the most part, they're all really trying to hit that goal. Um, the other thing that we started instituting last summer was summer reading free choice. This has been huge. Um, so last summer we, we give recommended lists from the teachers and but students can recommend something or, or ask to read something that's not on the list. They can get permission to do that. So they have a lot of choice in the matter, lots of different genres. And um, I'll show you some of the things that the students said about it on the next slide. Uh, again, we did the book love book study which made a huge difference. And in ninth grade last year, our ninth grade teacher was very focused on getting them into the process of free choice reading. And it was hard for her. She's a new teacher, but she persevered. And I mean, she saw some fruits. It was incredible. She had students who um, started putting in, we have Destiny uh, Discover, you know, Follett's uh, library system. And I taught them how to do book reviews in the system. So she had them all do their, do a book review of their summer reading book. And they put that into Destiny to Discover. Well, then all of a sudden she had some boys, which was huge, ninth grade boys who they weren't readers. Um, they were putting in one and two sentence reviews on their own without being prompted. I sent when I first saw it, I sent it a screenshot to her and I was like, look at what's happening. And like, it, you know, this is all of you're you're starting to see the fruits. I know it's been difficult. Um, but she would have it, she kind of did an elementary version of each uh because it it kind of became chaotic she would let large groups of them come to the library to pick a book but you know teens are teens and some of them were abusing the time so then she started uh, the system of um you know monday this is this row is monday's library time this row you have library time on tuesday and etc and then we also started putting a cart in her classroom because there were a lot of um young men especially in her class who they were not used to reading and they we were trying to get them to fall back in love with it and they wanted really short books that was how they judged what they wanted to read and that's fine um but they really became they came to love biographies short biographies so I bought some more for them anyway we would we would put lots of different variety on the cart so that they wouldn't always have to leave the classroom especially if you know they were in in the middle of something really important Important. Um, and so between those two efforts, I, I I hope that she realizes I keep trying to tell her what she's done for this group of students, and it's only going to help the sophomore English teacher. Um, and then the other thing is encourage all teachers, not just the English teachers. We have, um, I'm at a Catholic school, so we have theology teachers who, if they have some free time, uh, our senior theology teacher for sure, she will allow her students, let's go outside and read for the last 10 minutes of class and, and things like that. So this is what um, some of the feedback was from our students about the way we did summer reading last year. And you can see overall, the main thing was they loved having choice. Even though a lot of them stuck to the recommended list, they still felt like they had choice because there were so many. And, um, and then, you know, we also got some feedback. I remember one list in particular, they said, you know, maybe we could have more genres than what was offered. So I always love getting feedback from teens. They they usually take it very seriously. So it's time to share. If you'd like, I made a Padlet and I use this uh, for another presentation. So you'll see some things are already on there, but I would love for you to share what you do because we all have tips and tricks to um, just, you know, keep improving. So that's the link to the Padlet. If you uh, can scan it or if you would like to uh, type in that bit.ly link. And again, um, you know, if there are going to be some resources that uh, will be sent out, I believe. And so I'll see if we can get these on there as well. 
Uh, another Penny Kittle quote, the pathway to difficult reading begins with books they enjoy and book choice is so important. So my second tip is to involve all stakeholders. Any chance you get to model reading, do it. Um, and so we'll start with admin. Our admin is very supportive. I'm fortunate that my principal was a former librarian, so she gets it. And we have um, a teacher book club. We call it the Easy Teacher Book Club, where we meet in the summer and we just share what we've read. And by the end of the, the meeting, we usually you know, meet somewhere fun where there's food. By the end of the meeting, we have a list of books and I type them and put them all together and send them to everyone. Now, what we did this year, I made a group me and I got them to name it. So one of the teachers came up with the name shelf indulgence thought that was really great and we y'all the the group me has been amazing like just last night they were talking in the group me I'm, I'm gonna pull it up um they're talking about books without me I mean I'm I'm following along but they're sharing and so what we decided from the conversation last night in this group me is that we're going to I'm gonna have a teacher bookshelf in the lounge where it's like bring a book leave a book you know free little library kind of thing and I'm also doing um, I got this idea from another librarian to do um, it's she called it lazy book club but I'm calling it easy book club where you leave sticky notes with recommendations and so you can go browse for recommendations you can leave recommendations and I'm also going to do that on the student side as well and so um, it's just been really fruitful. And one of the counselors who uh, shared this in our group me last night, and I just I thought this story, it was so good. She said, I hated reading so much in high school that I left my assigned book on the floor of my bedroom when we evacuated for Hurricane Rita, praying it would be destroyed. It was. And here I am finishing three books in three weeks on my own because of the enjoyment. And she said that I instill, but really, I'm trying to point out to them, it's their sharing. It's that they're willing to be a part of it. It's it's not just me. So um, we also have what we call book in a backpack. We do it in the fall just to get the students used to having a book in their backpack. And so what our Dean of Academics did, we would go in together and she would say, hey, who has a book in their backpack that's not like a required English book um, or textbook and they would hold it up and she'd give them a little treat and then she had them share and so this young man in this picture is sharing about the book that he was reading so again modeling right um, so faculty and staff I have book browsing opportunities um, I'm sure you know that's that's nothing really new but um, we also once you start having these conversations, teachers will just take it and run with it. And so our Spanish teacher, our AP Spanish teacher, she did a book study, a free choice reading book study in her AP Spanish class. And that's the picture of them in front of the screen with their books. And then um, I have a teacher, a history teacher who always keeps a book stack on his desk um, to engage students and they talk about books and he gives recommendations. So um, this bulletin board right here is our science teacher for National Reading Month. She does. I mean, she did. She didn't confer with me at all. She just did it and then printed the bookmarks in the library and shared with me. And I, I was just flabbergasted and, and so appreciative. Um, so just keep encouraging and they'll generate ideas on their own. Our volleyball coach, usually in the summer, does a book study with her volleyball team. How, how awesome is that? And then this is our art teacher. Um, and I just, again, like if I see a teacher with a book, I snap it ask them if I can put it on social media, model, model, model. Uh, the other thing that kind of took off that I didn't even really you know, plan on, I started putting what I was currently reading in my email signature. And I blocked some things just for privacy sake, but you can see I have a math. Uh, so anyway, I started it with my email signature. I noticed another teacher saw it and just started doing it. And then I thought, well, hey, I'll, I'll just throw that out there and ask everyone. And more and more people are doing it. So I have a math teacher who's putting not only her what she's currently reading, but her recent reads because she reads a lot. And again, a history teacher and um, our science teacher. Uh, and they're all putting what they're currently reading in their email signature. Again, I mean, it's just amazing. And it makes a huge difference. These students are watching. Um, so coaches, athletics is a big part of our school. We're kind of a small school. We have about 500 students and a lot of them are involved 
involved in sports. So the Dean of Academics and I talked to, we met with the coaches. I took some books, some sports books, and just talked to them about the importance of modeling and please talking to, you know, talk to your team about reading and maybe read a book as a team because I saw the volley, the volleyball coach did that on her own. This wasn't because of me, but I was like, you know, maybe more people will do that. Um, and so the the picture on the left, the uh, one of the, fo the football coach wanted the book, The Art of War. I ordered it for him. And do you know that, I mean, it, he obviously talked to his students about it because two football players came in shortly after and wanted the book as well. And so I was like, well, we can put it on hold for you because I just had one copy at that time. Um, but it, it, it's, it's huge. And our basketball coach, I got a book for him because I'm trying to tell them, if you need a book, if there's a book you're reading, come to me. I will get it for you. So um, again, I try to put things on Instagram as much as possible just to show all the different people who are reading and that reading is cool. Students, uh, we have a library advisory board. They help me with different reading challenges and things like that. We have an easy book club for students and um, we have really only been able to meet in the summer. They're so busy during the school year, but I am going to remedy that this year. And I've already kind of planned to have maybe some quarterly uh, book clubs with the same kind of a format that we do in the summer, the easy format. I think before I always thought of book club as you have to read the same book and talk about it, but I'm finding that it's just them reading whatever they're reading and talking about that and sharing. And you can see the sparks that start happening and someone will say, oh, I want to read that one. And again, I do the list um, and get them to, um, you know, so that they can have that to read list or put the ones that they want to read. And I usually link it to um, uh, Goodreads so they can see the synopsis and things like that. I keep peppermints in the library. I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's funny. It brings so many kids into the library. And I know a lot of times they're coming just because of the peppermint, but I'm like, hey, whatever gets you in here, because eventually you might leave with a book. Um, I read somewhere in an article that peppermints spark the brain. So that's why peppermints. Um, the Microsoft Flip live events, if you aren't familiar with that, I highly recommend that you check it out. There's a link in the wakelet that um, I shared at the beginning. They have a, usually a lot of authors. And um, I remember I did, um, they usually happen around lunchtime. I, I can't quite remember, but um, Rick Riordan did one of their Flip live events. And I remember I showed that during the library. It happened to be during our lunchtime. And um, it was 30 minutes. And uh, it's just, they're, they're really great and lots of different topics, but they do have authors uh, every now and then, or really, I would say definitely yearly. Um, so that, that's, this is something that's coming up. Um, they have a 9-11 special event with Jenna Bush Hager and then International Dot Day on September 15th. So again, Microsoft Flip live events. Also involve the public library and parents. Again, I have a great administration and our Dean of Academics. She is, you know, she did all the work. She talked to me about it, but she was like, hey, I'm gonna get the public library to come to help sign up teachers who don't have a public library card. And then she also last year got us onto their e-resources for students. So um, I have a help desk. I have students who come and work uh, help desk in the library and, and the library desk. Um, different periods throughout the day, and they put together and made videos of how to use these resources with their school ID. So uh, that has been really fruitful. And then parents, um, I always, when I do reading challenges, I invite them to do it as well. Sometimes I'll, I'll get a parent every now and then who will do it, but we also have a parent guild and they provide grants. And I got uh, a parent guild grant to get like a new rug for the library. We're in temporary um, housing or we're on a temporary campus right now because we, we had a hurricane a few years ago. Um, so our space is, we're trying to make it the best it can be. And um, I had a group of girls, many in this picture that you can see who, when we first went to our temporary campus, they said, hey, can we make a reading area and they took it away and 
put lights up and had um, bought a couple of other chairs. Like this young woman got some money donated. I mean, I'm so happy they felt empowered to do that. I was not at a place to even think about it, but when she met with me, I was like, yes, let's do this. What do I need to do? And um, it's, I love empowering young people. So again, this is the QR code if you'd like to share your ideas with any of these tips that I'm mentioning. So I, I, I hope that you do because I love to get bigger and better ideas. My third tip is to provide reading challenges and book excitement. I always have a summer reading challenge, and then I have usually seasonal reading challenges throughout the year. This year, I attended a presentation at our Louisiana Library Association Conference, and a school librarian in Lafayette, she talked about how she's doing a million word reading challenge, and it is phenomenal, and I can't wait to implement her work. I'm so happy she shared uh, about it. And so I'm going to actually, that's going to be our challenge for this whole year, next year. But I do like the seasonal reading challenges. We do March Book Madness every year where we have a bracket and I take the top 10 books that are most checked out and that's, or 16, sorry, and that's where we start. And the students really love it. And this year, um, the English teacher helped me, me make a hype video. I'm not gonna show it for time's sake, but what I wanted to say about it is we included pictures of our actual basketball players, girls and boys. And I think they really got a kick of seeing them themselves in the hype video. Oh, it was going to play, but we're not going to play it. My fourth tip is to spread the word. Um, so we have our LMS is Teams, Microsoft Teams, but uh, I use Instagram and Melissa Corey on Twitter. She has these visual lists that she's created that, and she shares the templates and I'm so appreciative to her. And so I started making visual lists and um, I've made some of my on my own now. I'm so proud of myself, but I still, her templates are amazing. And I have them in the library and uh, just to help them with selecting books. Uh, so this is all done through Canva. And I, I just always put this because I do find that some people don't know that if you sign up for Canva for EDU, you get all the bells and whistles. So make sure that you do that. You can just Google Canva for EDU and get make sure you get your account on the EDU version. This is our Microsoft Teams. We have a, a team for every class, uh, like like the whole class, the class of 2026, the class of 2027. And I have a library help desk channel in that team. So I'm really able to spread the word through uh, our LMS, which is very helpful. And Instagram, of course. So again, remember to share. And um, I think I have one more tip. Yes, the small stuff matters. Look for opportunities to build on your success and keep the conversation going. I uh, was listening to the School Librarians podcast um, one time and Tuesday Chambers, she's in Washington State. She's a high school librarian and she said something that really helped change my perspective. She said, you know, she does things and sometimes it, it's not always about the numbers, right? She said, you might have five students who participate but that might be two more than you had last time and or something to that effect. And I was like, you know, that that's true. Sometimes, you know, you put something together and it's kind of crushing because not very many people participate, but is it growing? And, you know, you have to start small. So this is an example here. Um, one of our seniors during his senior year, he was a basketball star and he went to tour Oregon, um, in, you know, in a university there. And I got an email from him that said, I just wanted to let you know, I visited this bookstore in Portland and I've never seen so many books in my life and it's awesome. I'm not a big reader, but this is definitely a good place to start. Still brings tears to my eyes because he took the time out to do that and he got his book. So I don't know why I'm getting so emotional, but small things matter. So same thing with teachers. This teacher was telling me that she had really put reading to the side, but now she's reading again and I, it helps with stress. It helps with creativity. It helps with so many things. So every opportunity, I just 
try to encourage people to read and to help me build that community because I can't do it alone. So here's my information again. And if you, uh, again, would like the resources, that's the QR code. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them now. There are some questions in the Q&A you might want oh, to take a look oh, at. No. Oh, sorry. Go look at that. Oh, it's, um, no, it's not. It's not hyperlinked. I'm sorry about that. You would have to type it in. Um, I should have thought about that. I apologize. I kind of added it at the last minute. Um, are the teachers reading YA or adult books for the book club? So the um, either uh, it's mainly for them. It's whatever. I don't set any guidelines at all. I do have teachers who love to read YA, which and I love that because it helps me out. Um, but typically, I would say for our teacher book club, it's uh, it's adult books. It's a lot, whatever they're they're wanting to read. Um, can you share the slides in the one pager at the end of the Boss Librarian PD? Yes, I'm I'm happy to share. I'll I'll get with um, Boss Librarian and uh, and make sure I get these resources to her. Have you had any luck integrating reading time free reads with the upperclassmen English classes? Oh yes, yes. I so we I usually meet with the English department. Um, and I, the AP teacher, the senior AP teacher is a very much uh, a part of this movement. Um, she, even in AP classes, I mean, she she does, um, you know, they have themes in AP that they have to cover, but she still gives them choice and um, she still gives them time to read. Again, like we can't say it's important and then you're not giving them any reading time at all. And I, I tell the English department or, I, you know, I just say just... I understand it's overwhelming. Start small. If you can't do every, you know, class, a 10 minute reading time, then pick it, maybe start with one day. Um, but it, because there needs to be some consistency, right? Like I think it helps the students to know, hey, Monday is free reading choice day or, or you know, whatever. Um, so like last year, I would say our freshmen and our senior teachers, both AP and on level, um, were very much had a routine. Our sophomore and junior teacher, they did more of a hit or miss thing, but hey, again, they they tried, and I, I'm hoping this year they can really uh, grow that. How does your summer reading work? Do they come into the library? Are you open? So, so because we're on a temporary camp, so I allow them to check out books before they leave school in May for the summer. We already have our, our reading recommendations. I pull them, put them on carts divided by grade level, and I, I offer them to come check them out for the summer. We can't really be open um, in the summer. I've tried, but we're on a temp, we're in a temporary campus and they they move. It's kind of crazy how they do, have to do this, but they move everything out of every classroom and they wax the floors and they move everything back in. So that just doesn't really lend itself to having open checkout. When we are in our new school, I will definitely be open some during the summer because I I can get stuff done and, and it's nice for them to have a, a library open that they're familiar with. Um, it's, did I answer everything? I think I did. Oh, and you're welcome for the, the closed captioning. Uh, I love PowerPoint subtitles. Okay. Oh, Melanie, thank you so much. A lot of great tips in there. Um, I, I know this is coming from a high school lens, but there's so many things that you talked about that can easily be used across the board with our middle and elementary school librarians. Thank you so much. And again, you are the Louisiana Librarian of the Year, correct? Yes. Very honored to you. and humble. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations to well, thank you. you. Okay. Thank All you right. for this. Well, we're going to move on.